IB Biodiversity Evolution and Classification Part 3 has its focus on understanding classification. The essential idea is species are named and classified using an internationally agreed upon system. The outline of movies for the Evolution Core SLNHL is provided here. Use this outline to find the movie you need for revision. This movie is focused here. This is an image of Darwin's drawing as he imagined life branching out from common ancestors. Darwin was grouping organisms, as you can see here and here and here, according to similar characteristics. Classification is the grouping of organisms in a systematic way, according to their evolutionary history. Classification is the arrangement of organisms into discrete, hierarchically nested groups based on similar characteristics. Here is our first IB syllabus statement. State that the binomial system of names for species is universal among biologists and has been agreed and developed at a series of congresses. Biologists have agreed worldwide to use the binomial naming system to give each species a name. The two name designation given to each species are the last two names of the classic seven taxa hierarchy, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. The genus and species names provide the specificity required when biologists communicate about species. The binomial scientific name for humans is Homo sapiens, genus and species. So when a new species is discovered, as this Olinguito was in 2013, it is given a name using the binomial system. Basari Sion nablina is the name of this organism. The value of using the binomial nomenclature is that it provides specificity, specificity that avoids the confusion of common names like Olinguito. The same common name can often be used for maybe many different species, like, like the word daisy or chimpanzee or, or grass. Each species has only one scientific name in the binomial system. There is no confusion when referring to Bessarision neblina. I'm sure there are many flowers that people might refer to as the daisy, but this flower, also known as the common daisy, has the scientific name of Bellis perennis. The binomial naming system provides specificity about the species. So here are three relevant IB syllabus statements. Describe the value of the binomial system of nomenclature. State that when species are discovered, they are given scientific names using the binomial system. Describe the value of classifying organisms. The first two statements I've already addressed. Let's look at the last statement. The value of classifying species has three points. Classification has value in cooperation. Collaboration between scientists is better when there is clear identification of species. Classification has value so that we can clearly identify species that exist within groups that display congruence among characters. And classification has value to better understand the natural evolutionary history of organisms and predict characteristics that are shared by species. All the organisms on Earth are classified into three domains, the highest and most inclusive of all the taxonomic groups, domains. I know I haven't covered the taxonomic hierarchy well, but be patient, I will be covering this soon. The domains are bacteria, the archaeans, and the eukaryotes. Plants, animals, and fungi are eukaryotes. The archaeans and the bacteria are single-celled organisms, prokaryotic organisms. The common ancestor of all life is here. The domains that I showed you on the last slide are here in purple. Bacteria, archaea, and eukaryote. The bacteria and the archaeans are single-celled organisms without a nuclear membrane around the DNA. They are prokaryotic cells. The organisms in the eukaryote domain are composed of cells with a nucleus, thus they're eukaryotic cells. The protists, like amoeba or the malarial parasite, fungi, such as yeasts and mushrooms, plants, and animals. 
From the last slide, remember, viruses are not classified as living organisms. Here is the IB syllabus statement that by now should be clear to you. Outline the classification of living organisms into three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryote. As an aside, a quick note, a bit of detail on archaeans, detail that I will mention here and that I've mentioned in the cell unit. Archaeans are interesting prokaryotic organisms in a number of different ways. They're often known as extremophiles because many archaeans reside in extreme environmental conditions, such as hot springs or highly salty conditions. As well, methane is produced from organic matter in anaerobic conditions, low oxygen, by methanogenic archaeans, and some methane diffuses into the atmosphere or accumulates in the ground. Here is the taxonomic hierarchy from domain, the broadest, most inclusive group, to species, the most specific or singular group. We have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Doubtful, King Philip came over from Great Spain. In this diagram, you can see the taxa here, order, family, genus, species. You can see that the domestic dog and the wolf have the same genus, canis, and have evolved from a common ancestor that was in the Canidae family and the carnivora order. The wolf and the domestic dog are closely related because they share a recent common ancestor. Before leaving this slide, I would like to take note of the arbitrary nature of the taxonomic hierarchy as shown here on the left. Branch points, while you might see one here and here and here, can take place at any time through evolutionary history, not just the seven times that might be implied from the seven taxonomic categories. For example, just because all of these species have the same order does not mean that they all diverged at exactly the same time from the ancestral line as might be implied in this diagram. Again, to lump all of Earth's organisms into, into seven taxonomic groups is quite arbitrary. In this image, you can see the hierarchy of taxa here from domain down to species. Let's start at the bottom. We have a genus that has seven different species. This is one species among seven. This species has a common ancestor with the other six within this genus. Within this family, there are seven genera. This genera of organisms have a common ancestor within this family. Within this order, there are seven families. This family has a common ancestor with the other six within this order, and so forth. Let, let's go to the top. In all of life, there are three domains. We've been through that already. Pull out the eukaryotic domain. There are four kingdoms. Let's pull the animal kingdom, giving rise to the phylum chordata. And from the chordata phylum comes the class of mammals. And from the class of mammals comes the order primate. And from the order primate comes the family homididae. And from the family homididae comes the genus Homo. And from the genus Homo comes the species known as Homo sapiens. The red fox, scientific name Volpes Volpes, has descended from more inclusive groups of organisms. The red fox is in the Canidae family, and that includes the wolf, the domestic dog, and jackal, among others. The red fox is in the order carnivora that includes both canines, the dogs, and felines, the cats. The red fox is in the class mammal that includes all animals with fur that provide milk to their young, etc. Ursus americanus, the black bear, is classified in the eukarya domain, animal kingdom, chordata phylum, mammal class, carnivora order, Ursidae family, Ursus genus, and Americanus is the species name. You can see how the higher taxa are more inclusive, broader groups. In this diagram, you can see the class mammal, the order carnivora, and the family Philidae. 
Again, the taxonomic hierarchy assumes that branch points from common ancestors occur at regular intervals and have only happened seven times. Branch points where species diverge to become different species can happen at any time throughout evolutionary history, and the assignment of all organisms into seven taxa is arbitrary. The analysis of DNA base differences among species allows scientists to truly understand the relatedness of species. You can see in this diagram there are branch points occurring at various points in time, not regularly spaced intervals, as would be implied by the seven taxonomic categories. For example, the tuna, the snake, the duck, and the pig, and the human are all in the same phylum, phylum chordata. There's a branch point representing a change of class here and here, and as it turns out, here. This branch point separates the duck and the snake into different classes, aves and reptilia, while this branch point separates the human and the pig into different orders because they're in the same mammal class. So these two branch points happen at about the same time but are not aligned in the taxonomic hierarchy. So that brings us to this IB syllabus statement. State that taxonomists sometimes reclassify groups of species when new evidence shows that a previous taxon contains species that have evolved from different ancestral species. In 2014, the sea anemone was reclassified. Scientists examined the DNA of Bolosoroides daphnie and have now renamed the species Relicanthus daphnie, placing it into a new order, Actinearia, which also includes anemones, black corals, and stony corals. The figwort family, Scrofulariaceae, had been classified based on morphological data, body form. But more recently, DNA evidence has resulted in a reclassification, new relationships among organisms. Some former figworts are now placed into different families. Our last IB syllabus statement of the movie is, classify one plant and one animal species from domain to species level. Remember, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, Doubtful King Philip came over from Great Spain. Before looking at the specific classification scheme of a single species or two, let's look at the characteristics of the four kingdoms within the eukarya domain. We have protestants, one-celled, heterotrophs, autotrophs. Their sexual cells lack differentiation. We have the fungi, mostly multicellular. They're heterotrophs, varied feeding, cell walls formed of chitin, they have hyphae, and their body is haploid in chromosome number. We have the plants, multicellular, photoautotrophs, cell walls composed of cellulose, mostly non-modal. We have the animalia, the animals multicellular, heterotrophs, no cell walls, and modal. The leopard, Panthera partis, is derived from the eukarya domain the animal kingdom, the phylum chordata, class mammal, order carnivora, family Felidae, genus panthera. Panthera pardus, binomial nomenclature. Here are two species, an animal and a plant, classified from domain, two species. The species on the left should be familiar to you. I'll let you study this slide on your own. Here's the classification of the black bear from domain to species. You've seen this slide already. This slide foreshadows the next movie, the next part of this evolution core series. There are four plant groups, four plant phyla that you will need to get to know. The bryophytes, the mosses, the philocenophytes, the ferns, the coniferophytes, the conifers, the cone-bearing plants, and the angiospermophytes, the flowering plants. Here again is the plant kingdom separated into the different phyla. The four plant phyla that you will need to get to know are the bryophytes, the mosses, the philocenophytes, the ferns, the coniferophytes, gymnosperms, the conifers or cone-bearing plants, and the 
angiospermophytes, the flowering plants. The mosses have no vascular tissue, tissue by which water would be drawn up from the soil, and the bryophytes have no seeds. The philocenophytes, the ferns, the ferns have vascular tissue, but like the bryophytes, the ferns have no seeds. The coniferophytes have vascular tissue and seeds, but the seed is not well protected. And the angiospermophytes have vascular tissue and they have very well protected seeds. This slide also foreshadows the next movie, the next part of this evolution core series. You will need to become familiar with the following animals. Periphera, the sponges, nidaria, the corals and anemones, animals with stinging cells, platyhelminthes, flatworms, such as tapeworms, arthropoda, animals with jointed legs, such as insects or spiders or crabs, Annelida, worms, earthworms, worms with segments, mollusca, animals with shells such as clams or snails, and chordata, animals with backbones such as mammals. Here is the last IB syllabus statement of the movie. Construct a dichotomous key for use in classifying specimens. When constructing identification keys, students should be reminded that generic terms, such as big or small, are not useful. Comparative quantitative descriptors and simple identification of the presence or absence of external features are most useful in keys. Here is an example of a key, a dichotomous key, two choices at every step. Pay close attention. We start with an unknown organism to identify, and we ask, does it have feathers? Yes or no. Does it swim? Yes or no. Or does it have legs? Yes or no. For example, does it have feathers? No. Does it have legs? Yes. The unknown organism is a lizard. Avoid using vague terms such as large, small, dark, light, etc. Here is a dichotomous key structured in a linear fashion. Let's attempt to determine C as our unknown organism. Are the wings covered by an exoskeleton or not covered by an exoskeleton? They're not, so we go to three. Are the wings pointed outward from the body or the wings pointed toward the rear of the body? They're pointed outward, so dragonfly. Dragonfly is our organism C. Avoid using vague terms such as large, small, dark, light, etc. Here is another linear dichotomous key. Pay close attention because you need to be able to construct a key. Let's identify bird X. Is the beak relatively long and slender or is it relatively stout and heavy? It's stout and heavy, so we'll go to two. Is the bottom surface of the lower beak flat and straight or the bottom surface of the lower beak curved? It's curved, so we'll go to three. Now this one takes a little bit of attention. Is the lower edge of the upper beak, does it have a distinct bend or is the lower edge of the upper beak mostly flat? It appears mostly flat, so this bird is platy spiza. So here's a chance for you to practice. Can you construct a key to identify the six organisms in this figure by their visible physical characteristics? Avoid using vague terms such as large, small, dark, light. You cannot tell from the diagram that the alligator is larger than the frog. You cannot tell from the diagram that the snake has rough skin and the frog has smooth skin. Use visible characteristics. Assume nothing. Turn the movie off now and get to work. Here's my dichotomous key from figure one on the previous slide. Other keys are possible. Yours does not have to be identical to this one. But your key should not have vague terms such as large, small, dark, light, smooth, rough, etc. And that brings us to the end of IB Biodiversity Evolution and Classification Part 3. In Part 4, we will look more carefully at the characteristics of the plant and animal groups that are required by the IB syllabus.